So I'm a big fan of Thermal Wright's Air CPU coolers. Uh, the Peerless Assassin lineup is really good. So I thought I'd give their AIO a try. Uh, it just showed up when I was cruising through Amazon. Saw it and I was like, what the heck? Might as well give it a try. This, an US equivalent, the Peerless Assassin can go for around 40 bucks. This is going for around 60 bucks. So for $20 extra, you can get uh, a water cooler for your CPU. It's a white RGB 360 um, millimeter uh, cooler. The actual name of it is the Frozen Prism 360 White ARGB. So we're going to test this in uh, it's a 7000D, uh, Corsair 7000D with the uh, AMD 7900X. So it's a fairly hot CPU. Um, I have no doubt it'll be able to handle uh, gaming and all that, but I'm curious how well it will handle the um, 7900X with Cinebench R23 uh, max core utilization and go from there. Anyway, I'm hoping it doesn't disappoint. Um, so far, they have been by far the best bang for your buck that you can get. $40 for a dual tower air cooler that's on par with like Noctua. That's that's a sweet deal. So hopefully their um, uh, their AIOs bring the same kind of performance, uh, but performance price. So we'll see. Uh, as the name suggests, the, it's white. It has RGB ARGB on the fans and on the the cooling block. Ironically enough, all the fans come pre-attached to the uh, the radiator, so that takes one step out of the process of attaching that, which is kind of nice. And the other thing, it's kind of different from the regular fans. If you buy, these are really great uh, as well. You can get three ARGB fans for like 15 Canadian dollars. These fans for power are all daisy changed. Like you can daisy chain them together. So they have male and, sorry, female and male connectors. For some reason on here, it doesn't. It just has the female connectors. So they supply this little uh, connector here. So you can plug all of the, oh, not that, all the power connectors into here and then use the one uh, fan connector that's on the motherboard. As well, like I was saying, uh, the block here, it is, has got ARGB as well, but it appears to come with a blackout um, cover so if you don't want the ARGB on here you can put this on it instead so it'd be black and then it has yeah in here all the components you need to uh, this is good for LGA 1200 1700 AM4 AM5 so it comes with all the connectors in here and some thermal paste along with it and like I've done in the past and hopefully I won't do again don't forget to take the plastic cover off the uh, water block or other, else you're going to get some pretty bad temperatures. Anyways, let's get to installing it. So installing the AIO might seem a little daunting, but it's actually quite simple. Uh, all you have to do is take your time. Uh, the scariest thing is, for me, the, the block here, the water block that's going to be cooling everything, that's going to attach to the CPU. It's pretty big and it's going to be swinging around. Just find a place where you can rest it so it's not dangling around anywhere and then just hold the radiator uh, okay cut on something up here and all you got to do is line it up and then screw it in it's actually quite simple especially with this one where the fans are already uh, mounted to the block uh, what I recommend doing is the first thing is we're gonna put a screw in on each end in opposite corners just so it holds the radiator in place and we don't have to worry about it kind of sagging any one place and bending anything. So we're gonna put one in the far back corner right here. Don't tighten anything too tight. Just make sure it's snug because you might have to move it uh, to line it up with some of the, the holes. Now we're just gonna do this one. Yeah, it's just gonna go in nice and not, not snug. It's gonna still be very loose because I can still move this around if I need to. And then from there, just 
screw them all in. Again, uh, put them in not too snug. That way afterwards you can move it around and line everything up correctly if one of the holes are covered or anything like that. And then after you get all these in loose, then go around and tighten them. There, now that I have them all in loosely, I can tighten them up one at a time. Again, don't do too tight. You don't want to strip anything. All right, let's take a look at the instructions and see what hardware we need to install the mounting brackets. So, um, I've already taken them off, but you will have mounting hardware already in there that you'll need to unscrew and replace with the supplied brackets that come with it. So we're going to need Oh, the packages are nicely labeled. AMD, we're going to need O and where's D and D. And it's saying it doesn't say, I don't see it on here, but we also need these uh, plastic risers. Uh, it's shown here, but it's not labeled and they're P. So everything's in the bag that we need. And based on how the images are, you're going to want this threaded middle piece out and it's going to have the curved ends facing each other like that. So these little plastic risers uh, if you're more comfortable, you might need to lay this on the back. Um, if these don't uh, stay in place very easily, just tip it uh, on its back and it'll be a lot easier to keep them in place. And by tip it, I mean tip the PC on its back. I'm just going to lightly thread one of these in and then I'll be able to put the other one in and tighten it from there. That way everything is holding in place. Get a little closer. There. I don't like to tighten any one side all at once. It's always good to go around, tighten everything until they're just getting snug, and then tighten it the rest of the way, just in case something's off. That way you can still move things around. Again, put the little plastic risers right there. And the magnetic screwdriver is your friend. It'll hold screws on so much easier. And if you drop them in a tight, uh, hard to reach place, you can just use the tip of the screwdriver to pick it up. So it's almost getting tight, so we'll do this side. And again, not too tight, just snug. You don't want to strip anything, especially on an expensive motherboard. So we are almost done. So the next step is we're going to apply some thermal paste. Now, when you're using an AM5 CPU, uh, you have a lot more area to get thermal paste, thermal paste in and gunked up. 
we're just going to put a little bit in the middle. If you're not very comfortable with it, you can always use a plastic like credit card or something like a plastic credit card if it didn't come with the spudger. And you can just gently uh, apply the thermal paste in a thin layer across the CPU. I like the X marks the spot pattern. So like I said, don't forget to take the plastic film off and we're going to line this up and screw it on. Lightly one end at a time. So I'm having a hard time lining up the bottom one, so I'll go at the top. A couple spins, it's holding it in place, then you can line up the bottom one. There we go. When it stops wobbling around, you don't know you have it. So just do it a couple of turns. Top, a couple of turns, bottom. Okay, let's get tight. And there you go. That is good enough. So then, after that's all done, all the RGB. ARGB connectors can be pushed in the back, daisy chain them all together, and plug them in uh, together. But the fan and the pump header are going to have two separate uh, connectors here. One is CPU OPT, that's for the pump header, and CPU fan is for the fans. And you're going to have to put those all together. Oh, wait, no, I don't think I will be able to push these. I might just have to. Oh, no. Okay, so that fit all the way around. Nice. So there we go. Got that one done. Let's do all the ARGB together. Make sure I take all the plastic covers off. So you can access. Now this is going to plug into the header, and this one says GDV. It's got three pins, and it looks like there's a space for a fourth in the middle, but it's, uh, there's nothing there. And it's going to line up with, uh, with the connector. Then after you're all done this, you can just play around with the back to get everything nice and organized. Next is going to be the fan power connectors. And this is where you're going to have to get this connector out and plug everything in there. And then plug this into the CPU fan connector up there. I'm just going to slide that through and connect it right here. And we'll go down for below. And we'll turn it on and then we'll test out with Cinebench R23 to see how well, oops, how well it handles under max load. And then we'll test it in some games. Since I'm actually going to be testing this in the case and I want to show how loud it can actually get uh, before we start running any of the benchmarks, I turned off all of my case fans and I'm just going to play with the actual fans that came with the, uh, the AIO to show you how loud it gets at certain points. So right now, thinking that it would probably run at around 30% when it's idling.
So idling at 30% is going to hit around 34 decibels. So let's move it up to around 75%. That's probably what it will be idling at when you're gaming, or not idling, but that'll probably be what it's running at while you're gaming. So it's hitting between 46 and 47 decibels, still fairly quiet. And at max load, So at 100% we're seeing around 42 decimals. And that's inside the case, so it is going to be muffled a little bit uh, by the glass. So this is kind of what you can expect uh, for a noise level. And next we'll go do some benchmarks to see what it actually operates at uh, temperature wise. So moving on to Cinebench R23 using the multi-core settings. We are really going to test how well this AIO can cool a 7900X. The 7900X is a very hot CPU, and so far the air coolers I've tested um, have not been doing the greatest job of keeping the uh, CPU cool, but the other AIOs that I have have tried out have been able to manage around 90 degrees or so. And as you can see here, we did have, at one point, the uh, die 1 and die 2 sensors spiked to 90.9 degrees and 90.1, but I don't, I don't remember seeing when that spiked. For the most part, when I was looking at all the uh, backup to this video, everything was sitting just below 89 degrees. So as you can tell, it's able to cool the CPU enough that it's not going to thermal throttle the 7900X. I think the 7900X has like a 95 degree uh, cap and that's when it starts to uh, thermal throttle so we're fairly far off from that um, from that temperature and again this is all cores max load so it's definitely going to generate a lot of heat so the first game we're going to test out is cyberpunk 2077 uh, the settings i have is 1080p ultra settings with dlss turned on and i chose cyberpunk 2077 because it's one of the games that i find that actually utilizes the CPU the most. As you can see, well I guess the first thing I should mention is for the game, like for the gaming benchmarks, just to test it out, I do have the fan curve set to 100. So it's running at max and this is what you're going to see for um, the, C the cooling performance at max. It'll, mileage may vary depending on what your fan curve is going to be, but as you can see right there, it did spike to 67, but for the most part, uh, for the rest of the test that I did, it was sitting at around 60, 61 degrees. So it's keeping the CPU very cool, but again, it's a 7900X, we're at 1080p in this game, we're only using like 32%. Now we're into Warzone 2, again, 1080p, uh, I have it set to ultra or whatever the max settings are in this game. Uh, I do not have DLSS turned on. And again, the fan was set to for CPU. Well, it's going to be CPU fan or the cooler fans and the water pump. Everything set to 100%. So this is the max performance that this uh, AO can do. Um, unfortunately, I played this game twice back to back. I didn't survive very long in either aspect, but what you're going to see is pretty much a good representation of what was going on. I never saw the CPU temperatures go above 60. Uh, it stayed in the high 50s, but I really never, I don't think I saw it once go over 60. And if it did, it was only for a brief moment. So again, doing a good job keeping the CPU cool. So if you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. Have a good one.